Hey everyone, it's me Rianne and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm a witch and pagan and I like to talk about all things magical, mystical, and mysterious here. I love to talk about paganism, witchcraft, and the occult, and spirituality at large. So if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post a video, and I post here every single week all about the magical and the mysterious. So let's get into this video. This is a continuation of my last video. Video from last week where I started talking about some of the witchcraft basics that you can um, start implementing into your practice. The very first video was all about how do I anoint and dress a spell candle and then this video is a continuation of that where we're talking about how do you work candles, how do you understand and interpret the the divination that's coming through the candles and how do you read the flames how do you read the smoke the wax the soot all of that i am going to cover that in today's video okay so now that we've covered what the video is about what do you do when you want to do your spell your candles dressed it's all beautiful your intention has been put into it what do you do now the next thing you want to do is make sure you have plenty of space that your candle can go undisturbed, you know, animals are going to get in the way, and you know, nothing's going to catch fire. You need to make sure it's in a safe space. Then you want to cleanse your energy. You want to cleanse your space. So you can do this with any form of cleansing that you'd like. I like to use a cleansing herb bundle that I've made myself, and you want to clean that energy out. I open all the windows, and I banish any negative energy out, and at that point, I and be able to close my windows and be able to start focusing on my working. So you can choose to use sound or bells or you can do a smoke bundle or you can um, put on some nice essential oils that really help up the vibe and cleanse the area. You can cleanse with a cleansing spray. Whatever it is you choose to use, it doesn't matter as long as it works for you in your situation. Then at that point, you may want to sit down and start a grounding and centering session. Now I have a video all about this on my channel. I'll link it up here somewhere above and in the description box below, uh, all about how to do grounding and centering and how to develop that for yourself. So you want to start to connect to the energies of the earth and ground and focus your intention you may want to start thinking about your spell work and the different ways that it can come to you and start thinking about how you may feel after it's actually here. You want to focus your intention and pull up that energy. Now you want to build energy and this is something I feel like many people don't really talk about online is building your energy, building that energetic force field to then release it into your spell, release it into your manifestation. And it's a crucial part of your working. It's not just about lighting the candle and it's a one and done thing. It's not like that. You really need to work the spell. You need to um, put your energy into the spell. And to do that, you need to build that energy. You need to connect to the earth and pull the energy through the earth. And you can also develop that energy through your own personal working through dance or song or um, like rhythmic, like energetic breathing. You can choose whatever you'd like and see what works for you. And once that energy is built up and it's at like its peak, you want to light your candle and you want to start putting that energy into it. You want to focus into the flame. You want to focus into the candle. You want to start seeing the images um, if you're able to visualize of your manifestation coming to fruition. You want to feel the emotions that you would feel when you receive that. When it comes to candle work or any type of manifestation really, the more specific you are, the better without being too specific, if that makes sense. So you want to be very clear and concise on what you want. However, you don't want to block the universe from being able to bring you a version of your manifestation um, because it has another option. If you list something that's literally impossible and you're so specific down to a T to the point where the universe can't bring that exact situation with this 
list of demands in order in the exact same way in the exact same scenario you're kind of like shooting yourself in the foot so you really want to make sure that you say for example if you want to love working you want to make sure that you're attracting romance as opposed to maybe love in a general sense of care and loving from a friendship or uh, a parent you may like do a love working and then all of a sudden you may say love and you're working instead of romance and then end up getting like a phone call from a family member or a friend just checking in on you instead of like a romance asking you on a date, if that makes sense. Okay, so this is where my favorite part comes into play is where you get to be creative and chant over your spell working over your candle. At this point for myself, I actually put my hands over my candle working around it wherever I feel like I need to place them and I stare into the candle flame and I put all of my energetic energy uh, from inside of me that I've pulled up from the earth and that I've dredged up through um, elevating my energy force and building energy and I push it into the candle working and this is the majority of where the spell work actually really truly starts to begin. This is where you start to divine what you're starting to feel, what you're sensing, what you can hear, what you're seeing in the candle and what, how it's behaving and you chant what you're wanting over it or you can speak words of prayer over it whatever your style is um, sometimes I just talk to it and say what I want to feel and sometimes a lot of times it's repeating words that are very important to the working for me all right so the next part is the fun part is the candle flame meaning so the candle flame can be interpreted in many ways, um, however these are the ways that I've divined. Um, your answers might be different just like your answers for a pendulum uh, might be a little bit different. But these are the answers to the flame's behavior that um, I have seen most consistently over many other different practitioners. And this is from working practitioners that I have sourced and has rang true to me. So make sure you experiment and you can divine with your spirit guides. So the first thing you need to look for is if your flame will not light. If your flame will not light, it basically means that this working is not going to do anything for you, that you need to revisit your plans and revisit your divination and really find out the true answer to this because working this spell is not going to um, change anything or it's basically saying that the spell will not work for what you need. If a candle lights and splits into two or more flames, that means that there's a presence of an entity or another spirit in the room. Either it be deities, ancestors, um, other spirits that are present during the lighting of the candle. And they are wanting to be involved in the working, so that's why they're making themselves known. Now, if the candle flame is high and tall and burning strong and steady, then you have a really strong, powerful energy behind your working and things look positive. This means that there's little resistance and that you're going forward with your working with nothing in the way and uh, it all looks well and that it will work out for you in the end. If the candle burns low and small, that means that there's an opposing force to it that does not want this working to follow suit and you should probably stop and revisit what you're wanting to do about your workings. There could be an opposing force that you may need to banish or need to bind or a cleansing might need to be done. If there's crackling or a sound happening or popping while the flame is burning, that indicates talking. So either the subject of your spell is talking about you, or the spirits involved are talk trying to talk to you, or they are talking amongst themselves and there's a conversation happening. They are trying to come to an agreement or there might even be opposed to what's going on. There's just a conversation happening. So at that point I would usually do a divination to kind of see 
what's going on with that. If the flame flickers, that means that there's a spirit around you, and if it pops while it's flickering, it also means that the spirit wants to speak to you. If you attempt to snuff out or blow out your work and the flame does not want to go out, that means the spirit involved does not want you to put out this spell and it wants to continue, so leave it go and then let the spell finish its course. If the contents of the prepared candle uh, catches fire, so the herbs and all of that, uh, it means all the resources that you provided for the spell working are being used, and that could mean that there are obstacles in your way that your spirits are trying to use get rid of the ob obstacles that are in their way and are popping up so they're using all the resources that you've provided in the candle, all the energies that they can to help um, make the spell successful and at that point you might need to um, revisit your divination and see what you can do and see if there's a clearing that you can do or banishing or cleansing of some sort. If the flame goes out while it's burning that means that the spirits cannot help you and the answers that you are like seeking are already decided. So doing the spell that you're doing is not going to do anything. Generally my rule of thumb with the flame is if it's positive, the flame usually is bright, it's hot, it dances, um, popping, and a yellow flame is positive as well as white smoke. Now, it usually means it's negative result when things are dim, it's a cool flame, it flickers, um, maybe even a blue flame is involved, or it goes out, or there's any type of black smoke. These are good things that you can um, kind of look for that are easy to remember. Um, just warm, bright, um, dancey and flowy is really positive, and usually cool, dim, and flickery. And like, a, like it's struggling is negative. Now the next way that you can read your candles is if you're using the type of candle that has a glass around it, uh, a pull-out candle or a 70 candle, these types of candles will usually gather soot around the edges. Soot is a good way to really determine and divine answers for your spell work. If the soot does not travel all the way down, the glass, it's only at the top and maybe even stops in the middle. The negative influence or the obstacle has been unblocked. If the black of the soot goes down the entire length of your candle, it means that your working has been blocked and then there's things that are preventing you from achieving your goals. So you need to go and revisit and see what you can do to unblock those things. It could represent that someone has casted something against you or um, a significant like spiritual protection might be involved so you really need to kind of look at that and see what's going on there and talk to your guides about that. If the soot is at the bottom of the candle, it's a warning that negative influences are being sent to you and this can be the case when someone casts something against you so you really kind of just want to um, make sure you're focusing on your soot readings and making sure that all is well on those things because a positive burn might be okay but if you're getting negative soot readings or even like the wax pulling is negative you need to kind of look at that as a whole as well. White soot is indicated in like spiritual communication, it is purity, it is um, seen in exorcisms, it's an indication that your spirits have heard you and the negativity um, has been removed from your working. If the candle is burned like half black and half white this means there is something like taking over and um, may be assisting in overriding the situation. So you have to kind of determine what that means for you as well. If the soot is on one side of the candle, this is an indication that you're doing things wrong. Either ca the candle that you're working with isn't appropriate or the spirits aren't happy with the candle itself. If the glass that you're working with cracks, it means that there's some type of opposition and that it was broken. So it may have been sent to the spell or to deflect it, it may have been encountered along the way. So if it does not break and then the spell was protected, 
and successful. However, if it does break, then that means that there's something up against you that's a little bit more malicious and that you need to revisit that and um, see what is being sent your way, um, that the spell was not protected and that you need to kind of put up your defenses in that sense and your protections and revisit your divination processes. Now that we know how to do the flame reading and we know how to dress our candle and prepare it and get ready for ritual, it's important to know how to read the smoke. So if there's any type of smoke, white smoke is generally positive and black smoke is generally negative. So if there is black smoke in the beginning of your candle working, but then it turns into white smoke, that means that the energy has um, shifted into more of a positive aspect for yourself. However, if there is black smoke throughout that means there are blockages and negative energies around and that you might have to revisit protections and energy working and divination to see what's going on with that situation now the next part is one of my more favorite things to look at and is the reason why i use a working plate instead of a candle holder so i use a working plate because i really like to read the wax cooling as it's melted. Um, so once my candle working is 100% done and mel melted down, I look at the images that are within the candle wax and divine from those. Very much like tea leaf reading, um, you want to look at the images through there and through your own correspondences and uh, knowledge through your own life, you'll be able to relate certain images to certain aspects of your life, as well as there are certain meanings to a lot of different kinds of like candle drippings. Really well known one you'll see is the tears. There's also snakes that you can see quite often. Um, and then I'll read the plate. And now the plate is um, represented in different areas of the plate so each area means something different so off to the left it's like past feelings to the middle left is like the past and then down below it is past events down in the middle towards closest towards you is the physical plane off to the right is future events so i'll put up a picture up here um just kind of show you how it works but i kind of read the plate in the way in the areas in which it lands on the candle. So towards me is usually the physical, and then it's the past events and the future events. Then we have the past and the future, um, past feelings and future feelings, and then the non-physical is usually at the top. And you kind of want to read it that way, almost like a divination cup. And then you want to like read the images within that area and um, go from there. That's one of my favorite things to do about candle work is once the spell is done, there's still yet another way to divine answers through your spell work. And you can take images of your spell work as well for the future so that you don't forget what you've seen and that you can kind of go back and um, still learn things from your past workings. So that's how I do my spell candles, how I read the flame, the wax, the smoke, and all of that and prepare my candles. Um, if you'd like to share how you do your candle workings, definitely share in the comments down below because we would love to know and grow our practices together and learn things from each other. Um, if you are excited for the next video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well as hit the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post a video. I post every single week all about the occult and the magical, so make sure you don't miss out and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!